Hi, this video is part from my Ultimate DynamoDB course. What you're going to watch is just a tip of the iceberg if you want to learn complete DynamoDB from beginners to ultimate advanced level. Sign up into the link that is given in the description. With that said, let's continue to this demo. Now it's time to really understand how the data is being stored inside of DynamoDB and how can we really model our query based on that pattern up right there. So this is a bare minimum representation of DynamoDB up right here. As you can see, each individual attribute is being classified as key. So just like every other database has its own unique functionality like, so you might see in MongoDB that it really stores based on its own unique ID, especially if you want to really characterize everyone by its own unique name, let's say, for example, Twitter username, a phone number, email ID, you can use that kind of each individual key up right here. And just for example, in case of DynamoDB, each of the individual key, let's say if you're really using this only one pattern up right here, let's say if there's only student name, each of the student name should be by definition very unique up right here. So that would really help us not to really collide. So to really again give us a demo about it, I will just kind of show you up right here. But first we need to also really talk about the attribute. Now in DynamoDB, each individual attribute or each individual attribute of every individual key has a maximum size limit of 400 kilobytes. Now you might really question that that is not a very big limit. Now I agree with you. DynamoDB is really meant to store the text data. If you are really storing some like uh, S3 images, video files and all of that, you should use S3 for it and then link all of that metadata into our own DynamoDB. When it comes to practical example, in case of practical example session, I'll just try to show you how, how we can exactly do that. Again, if you redo the calculation correctly, considering that we have 25 GB of free storage, what do you think? How much can we really saturate all of the space together? Now, assuming that you are really storing this every each individual row by 400 kilobytes, theoretically, you can get 65,566 rows of attribute. And in real life, I would bet no one would ever saturate that limit. So if you're really loosely just kind of storing a couple of kilobytes of data here and there, you can easily surpass that rows up to like 1 lakh, 2 lakh, or for American folks, it's like 100,000 or 200,000 in that case up right there. So this is the basic bare minimum representation up right here. So just what I really mentioned, this key, if you're really using only one unique column, that is called as a keys, or in a correct terminology, that is called as a partition key. Just to give you a demo about here, let's come to our, let's come to our, let's say web console. Let's try to create one table. Let's say students, let's say students. And then what we can do is, uh, let's say students partition key, right? And what we can do is we can give it as student underscore PK. And then here we can do it as string, okay? So what we can do is we can do it as a, let's say, customized setting. What we want is as on demand because we don't want to kind of uh, exhaust our free tier limit. It's right, that's just pretty much up right here. Let's create a table. Okay, that is just creating, let me just refresh it for a while. Okay, now it's active. So now we are here. Let's do some, create an item, right? So let's say Kiran, Kiran, and then what we do is we add a string. Let's say uh, rank is rank is let's say no, we don't want string, we want number, say 100, right? Let's create an item. And this is successfully created. Now, if I want to create again an item of Kiran and then give it another, let's say, number, let's say rank, and let's say anything as 50. Let's try to create this. So it also, it really fails because this item already existed. So each individual time you need something different. Let's say if we just kind of do it as, let's say double A in between like Kiran or let's say anything in this case. Let's try to create this, okay? So now you really see that we really need something as, we need every individual partition key to be very different. So let's try to really just kind of, uh, do more simplistic way because as you can see this pattern is much more rigid now if you want to do some let's say if you are really having some nested object here and there that would really require a lot of post-processing in the back end to just to filter out all of the data so what can we do about it 
So we can really introduce a sort key. Now what sort key really does is, let's take for example, as you can see up right here, this, what we can do is we can really identify each individual subject at its own partition key. Now what, what will really allow us is like, let's say, so this English attribute, let's say this English whole column will get 400 kilobytes of dedicated space. Same is the case with physics plus Kirin up right here. Now, comparing with this one, this is not a very flexible pattern as you can really see. Now, as comparing with the previous one just right here, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, one thing in DynamoDB that you really need to notice is that you can't query or you can't just query based on a partition key. You can only do the query sorting, filtering and all of that based on the partition key. So again, just like in the case of in the partition key, each individual unique element should be unique up right there. So the partition key and the combination of partition key and the sort key, let's say Kiran and India should be unique and Kiran plus USA should be unique. Let's say Kiran is going to masters for USA and he's done some bachelors in India. And in that case, you can really map and model all of that case together right here. So just like, again, I would like to re just repeat it. The combination of Kiran and India the combination of partition key and sort key should be unique up right there. So just take for example, again, this is pretty much it. So you can try to really model all of your data in much more experiential way. So let's say Kiran is going to US, Kiran is going to India. So you can really model all of its own experiences in own model key up right here. So just take for example, you can also again subdivide that class into multiple structures. Let's say if he's going to do some USA sporting, USA tripping, Hawaii, if he's coming to Mumbai, then you can also do it like India underscore Mumbai and all of that structure up right here. Now, what we'll really do is it will really increase the flexibility and it will give us a more space for per sort column up right there. So that will really help us to really just uh, ease our own, uh, let's say, query pattern up right there. And it will really make our journey in doing some flexible queries up right there. Again, the combination of partition key and sort key is called as a composite key. This is pretty much this is the pretty much composite key that you really need to remember. In case of if you are really going for AWS certification examination, let's say database specialist and all of that, they might really ask you this theoretical question up right there. Again, this is really like a base synonym. Let's say uh, this is a partition key called as a primary key or hash key because we are hashing our item based on that. Now. The highlighted part or let's say the orange part is something that you don't need to worry about. This is the terminology that AWS handles its own backend stuff as well right there. So sort key also is called as a secondary key or a range key up right there because we are kind of doing some range and analysis over right there. That will really help us to query our pattern in much more ease. So again, to really see this pattern in action, let's come to the table. And again, let's try to create one table. Okay, let's try to do some uh, PK plus FK, right? If I'm not doing anything wrong. So let's say student PK and let's say subject S U B G E C T subject as sort key. Say sort. Let's do this as partition. So just to make it much more clear. Okay, uh, yeah. So we want customized setting, we want standard. It's the most better way. We want on demand. Yeah, everything is great. What's the problem? Okay, yeah. So oh, let's try to do it. Let's try to do this one. So there's some characteristic restrictions. So that is one thing that you need to be aware about. PKSK, right? So let's me just refresh it for a while. Okay, it's really active right now. So let's try to uh, explore an item up right here. Yeah. Let's create some item. And yeah, one thing that I really forgot to tell you that you need to be very aware about how are you really naming all of your uh, sort keys, partition key, because it's a case sensitive thing. If so let's say this, this, let's say uh, this is different from this and this. So naturally everything is case sensitive. This is, this will really affect you in case of sorting the thing together. If you're really having large set of data, this is much more trouble. So either you make sure that you either store all of your data in Pascal casing or Camel casing up right there. So let's say what we'll do is Kiran and then what we'll do is a sort key as let's say India. 
say India and then what we'll do is just, let's say string right subject string S U B J E C T subject as let's say uh, in engineering so let's say engineering right and then what we'll do is we'll create an item okay what we can do is now we can also really edit up right here it's so like we can also edit this sort key yes we want to edit this let's say we can also try to do that say we can also really try to do this as us okay so transaction will be used okay we are really comfortable with it recreate an item so what we'll try to do is it will first recreate an item and then delete the older one up right there so if we try to really refresh this again what we'll try to do is we'll try to create an item let's say kiran kiran and then what we'll try to do is as us so again if you don't like this visual editor you can also shift to json anytime that you really want but again i would say that this is much more pleasing and anyways in production you are We'll always be using SDKs of Node.js and our all of that kind of language. Node.js, Python, Golang, Java, or whatever might you might be using in production. Let's say uh, what we need to do is uh, like master subject subject uh, masters. Okay, yeah. Let's try to create this. So naturally, yeah, the primary keys existed. The sort key is also really duplicating so we need to kind of do it something like let's say india let's try to create this again so one thing that you need to really remember is the combination of partition key and the sort key should be unique again i would like to showcase you an interesting uh, this example of this covid database now this is a covid database that i have recently gotten access to because it's like this is from like a uh, ovid database i'll just mention link in the reference section so you can check that out so naturally let's assume that if you want to really upload this table which i'm going to show you as we go along with the case of batch processing and all of that so if you want to really upload all of this table in your own dynamodb table first you need to really decide whether you need a partition key or sort whether you need a partition or sort key so as you can see up right here there is nothing each individual item so in case of Let's say if you're really assuming only one partition key or only one row of each individual column, everything should be unique. So as you can see, everything is just repeating up right here. Nothing is kind of just going all along the way. So we need a sort key. So first thing that we need to really see that what can we make as a partition key? Let's say this ISO code or this country or this location. We can make any one of this as our partition key up right here. And then again, let's see this date. This is each individual date is unique for its own each individual attribute. So we can sort on date. So let's say this combination of ISO code because let's say this Afghan, let's say this location or naming convention can go here and there. So this AFG is much more cor correct terminology. That's just like this is an ISO code so that that is really helpful for us for in standardizing in the format. So let's consider this. This is our ISO code as partition key and this is our sort key up right here. And if you really see our, let's say in Dynamo table, I'll just kind of uh, glimpse through it up right here. And again, just come to the table, COVID database and explore all of this item. Okay, let's just try to fetching its state data stuff. So as you can see, this is ISO as a, uh, this is a partition key and this is a sort key. So again, let's say uh, if I go to the update setting, say indexes. If I come right here, there's none, let's say table summary, right? So yeah, here is it like in general information, as you can see, the ISO code is our partition key and the, let's say this sort key is our date. Now date is always usually stored in the string format. It will automatically format incorrectly as, as long as you really stored in correct ISO format up right here. So there you go. This was our basic introduction on how can you use the partition key how can you use the sort key and in which condition should you use the both i hope that you have got a basic gist and understanding about it as we'll go along with it so majority of all of your doubt will get really cleared up right here but still if you have any question comments or any queries please do let me know 
so that will be much more helpful for me to really understand what queries are you really trying to figure out what is the problem that you really are trying to understand so that i can really help you in trying to understand all of this scenario in much more better format till then see you in the next chapter